Hey, welcome to another video. So today we're going to be going into the Regency of Aegon III. But before I begin, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, join the Sith Citadel Discord, links in the description, and consider becoming a join member or sending a super thanks if you wish to further support the channel. Otherwise, let's jump straight into it. The Regency of Aegon III lasted from 131 AC to 136, while King Aegon Targaryen was in his minority. It was a period of numerous political conflicts that occurred during the councils of regents and hands of the king. Aegon ascended the Iron Throne at the age of 10, after losing most of his family to the unprecedented internal conflict and civil war that became known as the Dance of the Dragons. Several regents and hands ruled in Aegon's name for the first five years of his reign, until the king came of age. During the regency, numerous political schemes Plots and assassinations happened as the regents and their supporters vied for political power. After witnessing the horrific death of his mother, Rhaenyra Targaryen, late in the war, Aegon had become a quite sullen, melancholic boy who spent his days alone brooding. He was used as a pawn as lords and regents of the small council all sought to gain a political stronghold. The regency of King Aegon started with seven individual regents, who became known as the Council of Seven. Of these seven regents, only Grand Maester Munkin served during his entire regency. Other regents and hands of the king resigned, were replaced, or died. Aegon's reign began in the second year of a harsh winter, which would last until 135 AC. Winter fever took several of Aegon's regents. The first of Aegon's regents to pass was Lord Corlys Velaryon, who died in 132 AC of old age. His grandson and successor, Lord Alan Velaryon, hoped to take his grandfather's place on the council, but was denied. That same year, Lord Royce Caron came up his place on the council, so Torin Manderley gave up his place on the council as well that year, and returned home to White Harbor, following the deaths of his father and brother from Winter Fever. In 133 AC, Winter Fever took Sir Tyland Lannister, who had returned from the Free Cities the year before, and had been named Hand of the King, a position which he held and fulfilled capably despite the mutilations. Lord Roland Westerling, one of the regents, died in 133 AC of winter fever as well, and was subsequently replaced by Lord Thaddeus Rowan. Lord Unwin Peak had felt slighted when he had not been amongst the original seven regents. Yet in 132 AC, he was given Lord Corley's Velaryon's position. He rose to the position of hand in 133 AC, following the death of Sir Tyland Lannister. In his position of power, he saw his kin hold many high office, and endeavored to weaken his rivals by any means at hand. King Aegon had married his cousin, Princess Jahera Targaryen, the sole surviving child of King Aegon II, following the end of the Civil War. She apparently killed herself in 133 AC, when she threw herself out the window and was impaled on the spikes of Maegor's Holdfast. While officially named a suicide, there were some who questioned the manner of her death. Some whispered that Jahera had been murdered and one of the suspects named was Sir Marvin Flowers of the Kingsguard, the bastard half-brother of Lord Unwin, who had been the guard of Jehera's door when she died. Court full mushrooms suggest that Mervyn did not do the deed himself, but had allowed for someone else to push her out of the window. Maester Yandel speculates the assassin was Tessario the Tiger, a sellsword of the Free Cities in Lord Unwin's service. Following the death of Queen Jehera, Lord Unwin attempted to marry his own daughter to King Aegon. When the regent stopped his attempts, the Hand arranged the Maiden's Ball Day, during which a thousand maids were presented to the king. Ladies Reyna and Bela Targaryen presented a cousin of theirs, Lady Daenerys Velaryon. At the time only six years old, Aegon chose her as his new queen, which greatly frustrated Lord Peak. He attempted to have the king's choice put aside, but the other regents as well as Aegon opposed him. Unwin threatened to resign as Hand of the King in an attempt to bend the other regents to his will, but they were only happy to oblige. Thus, Lord Peak's resignation was accepted and he was replaced as Hand by Lord Thaddeus Rowan in 134 AC. Lord Dalton Greyjoy the Red Kraken had joined the Dance of the Dragons on the side of Queen Rhaenyra Targaryen and had been allowed to raid the western coasts. Though the war had ended, House Greyjoy's raid on the Iron Islands did not. Lord Alan Velaryon denied Lord Corley's Velaryon's place on the council, sailed with Sir Gedmund Peak against Rocalio Rydoon in the Stepstones. While Gedmund waited at Tarth for orders from Unwin, the Velaryons continued south and achieved a great victory against Rocalio's Bravosi allies. 
When Alan returned to King's Landing, his newborn fame proved divisive. The regents, despite Unwin's protests, gave Alan's honor and rewards. Lord Peak, in the end, convinced the regents to dispatch Alan to the Westerlands to deal with Dalton, almost certainly hoping it would result in Alan's death or defeat. Instead, it became the first of six great voyages by Alan. Dalton was eventually killed on Fair Isle, when a girl named Tess opened his throat with a dagger. As Dalton had never married, a bloody struggle began within hours of his death. Lady Joanna Lannister extracted revenge for all the suffering in the Westerlands in 134 AC, when a Lannister force with the aid of Sir Leo Costain attacked the Iron Islands. Upon the death of Lady Jane Arryn in 134 AC from an illness, a succession war broke out in the Vale of Arryn between three of her rival heirs, her fourth cousin and designated heir, Joffrey Arryn, her spurned first cousin, Errol Arryn, and her distant but wealthy cousin, Isambard Arryn. The Iron Throne tried to intervene, but was hampered by poor planning and political infighting between the regents, resulting in heavy losses. Goldtown was taken over only after costly house-to-house -house fighting. The fighting continued for over a year and only ended at the beginning of 136 AC, about half a year before the end of Age on the Third's Regency. Aegon's younger brother, Prince Viserys Targaryen, was believed dead by many. His return to King's Landing was one of the few joys of Aegon's reign. Having been found in lease by Lord Alan Valarian, a huge ransom was paid, and the prince was allowed to return to King's Landing. With him, he brought his new wife, Lara Rogare, a wealthy daughter of the powerful and ambitious Rogare family. Lara's family owned a Rogare bank, so powerful at the time that it was greater than even the Iron Bank of Bravos. The Rogare family soon became involved in the conflicts of this period. Accusations of wrongdoing were spread back and forth by many parties. Lord Thaddeus Rowan was accused of treason and being involved in a plot with the Rogare family and was tortured for information. After these affairs, Sir Marston Waters of the King's Guard became Hand of the King and sent men to arrest Lady Lara after he arrested her brothers, Lissario and Mordo. The young King Aegon defended his brother and his brother's wife and family, however, and refused to give her up, which led to a secret siege in Magor's Holdfast for 18 days. Eventually recalling his duty, Marston attempted to fulfill his king's command and arrest those who falsely implicated the Rogares and Lord Rowan. Sir Marston himself was killed, attempting to arrest his sworn brother, Sir Mervyn Flowers. Grand Maester Munkin briefly took over as Hand of the King and restored order until the new regents were appointed. Lord Torin Manderley was made the new Hand, and William Stackspear, Mark Merriweather, and Laurent Grandison were chosen by a great council to serve on the council in 136 AC. The regency ended the day of King Aegon III's 16th name day. The king entered the small council chambers accompanied by four knights of the king's guard and the silent Sandok the Shadow and coldly dismissed all of the regents and his hand. So what did you guys think of the regency of King Aegon III? Please let me know in the comments down below. If you haven't already, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, join the Sith Citadel Discord, links in the description, and consider becoming a joint member or sending a super thanks if you wish to further support the channel. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.